Welcome to another video. This problem is another Mathematics Olympiad problem from Australia and it's, it, I found this in the collection of problems that I received from the New York professor. If you remember the story that I told you. Yes, so there, there's so many problems and they're all beautiful. Well, some of them I still can't figure out the answer to, but this one makes a lot of sense. Let's get into the video. So the task is to find all pairs of n and k such that n factorial plus 8 is equal to 2 to the k. And we know that n and k will be positive integers. So let's try to figure out what this answer is going to be. Clearly, there's nothing I can do with n factorial because I don't know what n is. But these two guys look like they come from the same family, so it makes sense to put them together, okay? And uh, let's see. I'm going to say n factorial will be equal to 2 to the k minus 8, okay? So clearly I know because this is even and this is even, my n factorial has got to be an even number, whatever I get. But that doesn't sound like some profound knowledge because every factorial is even because not every factorial except for zero factorial and one factorial. Every other factorial you compute will be even if this is an integer, a positive integer, because two is the next number and at two times anything is even. So I know that I can play with the number two a lot. However, a factorial is a bunch of multiplications so it will be easier if you can write this as a product of two things and then use the properties of what you get to determine what the factorial is going to be. Now if you find any other strategy let me know but what I think is best is to write this as a product. Well writing a difference as a product requires that we factor something out. Now whenever I factor what can you even factor? It looks like 2. Oh, let's rewrite this. You know what? Let's rewrite this as 2 to the k minus 2 to the third. Okay, now this one, there's a lot of similarity between this and this. Whenever you factor things with exponents, what I always tell my students is look at the one that is smaller. So I go, which of these is the smaller version? Is k smaller than 3 or is 3 smaller than k? I don't know what k is. Okay, if k is less than 3, then all I'm saying is k is 1 or k is 2. That's all I'm going to say. So I have restricted k, so I'm not going to assume that. I'm going to assume that 3 is the smaller version and k can be any big number because we're looking for all pairs. So what I would do is factor out 2 to the third and see what happens. If I factor out 2 to the third, this is going to be 2 to the third. Remember that factoring is the same thing as dividing. If I factor out 2 to the third, what I'm saying is I am dividing each term by 2 to the third. I'm applying the laws of exponents, I get 2 to the k minus 3. That's what you get when you divide this by this. You just subtract the exponents. And then, if I divide this by itself, I'm going to get 1. That's my n factorial. Now something beautiful has appeared. Okay. From here, well, we know what 2 to the third is. You see, I could have done this straight from here, but I needed you to see that this is third. Now 2 to the third is the number we call 8, right? So I can say that n factorial is equal to 8 times 2 to the k minus 1, sorry, minus 3, minus 1. So what does this mean? It means that n factorial is a multiple of 8. That's number 1, right? The second thing is the number 8 is multiplying is an odd number. Why? Because any power of 2 is even, 
right? 2 raised to the power of anything will be an even number, and any even number minus 1 is an odd number. That's it. So you're looking for a factorial, which is a multiple of 8, but it is an odd multiple of 8. There are not many of them. And that's what makes this problem solvable. Okay? Because there are not many numbers that you would get as a factorial. Okay? It's, it's just easy. Okay? Let's write the fact here. So, n factorial is an odd multiple of 8. So it's either 8 times 1, or 8 times 3, or 8 times 5, or 8 times 7, or 8 times 9, but it cannot be an even number because this is odd. Do you see that? So let's investigate and see what options we have. Now look at this. If I want to write any factorial, let me just keep writing and, and stop somewhere. Look, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8, and I keep going like that. All I'm looking for is that the number I'm getting is divisible by 8. Well, as soon as 2 and 4 show up, that condition is satisfied. Do you see it? Once I get to this point, this number has already produced 2 times 4, which is 8. So the first here is 8 times 3. Now, this is a possible solution. I just have to find what k is if I take this as the odd multiple of 8. Well, I can go another step. Instead of stopping at 4, what if I say I'm taking this? This is going to be 24 times 5, 120. So that's going to be 8 times 15. Can I go beyond 5? The problem is you can't, because as soon as you go beyond 5, another even number shows up. And once you see, there's a 6 here. Okay, so it will no longer be 8 times an odd number. It becomes 8 times an even number if you pick 6. Look, this is going to be 8 times, what is 15 times 6? That's going to be 90. Now, 90 is not an odd number, and anything you do beyond here is going to be all even, even, even. So, these are the two candidates you can have. So, we can say the only possible values of n are n equals 4 and n equals 5. You stop here or you stop here. So it's either 4 factorial or it is 5 factorial. Anything else you try is not going to satisfy the condition of odd multiple of 8. So we got our n's. Let's find what k is going to be. So when n equals 4, what do we get? We get 2 to the k minus 3 minus 1 will be equal to 3. Remember, it was 8 times 3 because 4 factorial, when n equals 4, 4 factorial equals 24, which is equal to 8 times 3. So it means this is the 3 portion, and if you solve this, you get 2 to the k minus 3 equals 4, which is equal to 2 squared, which means that k minus 3 equals 2, which implies k is equal to 5. So when n equals 4, k equals 5 is a solution. And if we do the second part, and we also know that when n is equal to 5, we have 5 factorial equals, um, equals 8 times 15, equals 8 times 15. 15, which means 2 to the k minus, minus 1 equals 15, which implies that 2 to the k minus 3 equals 2 to the 4th, and then k equals 7. Because k minus 3 is 4, that means k must be 7, and that's it. So our solutions, n, k, therefore, n comma k 
4 comma 5. Those are the two possible combinations of N and K. Please like this video if it makes sense to you, okay? And never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.